In this video, we will discuss about sporophyte of anthocyros. Sporophyte of anthocyros is born on the dorsal surface of the thallus. Now, this is the thallus of anthocyros. On its upper surface, now this sporophyte is born, also called as sporogonium. Now, these are present in the form of clusters on the uh, this is anthocyros and they are present in the form of clusters on its upper surface. So that's why they are also called as horn warts. Now these sporophonia, they are elongated, rod shape, slightly curved and look like horns. And hence the plants are popularly known as horn warts. Now basal portion of the sporogonium is enclosed here uh, with a outgrowth from the thallus and this is called as involucre which is present on the again gametophytic part of the thallus. Now this thallus of the anthocyros uh, which is haploid in nature this is called as gametophyte and on it are born sporogonium and they are covered by a covering called as involucre like just we discussed and these rod like structures present on the dorsal surface of the thallus make anthocyros horn warts. Right. Now if we uh, if we can if see the structure of again this is anthocyros thallus this is involucre and this is the sporogonium right if we cut its ls longitudinal section of the capsule now we can see the structures like this it's this anthocyros sporogonium is differentiated into this part is foot this is seta and this is capsule or we can say if this is thallus now this is anthocyros sporogonium the part which is attached on the thallus, this is called as foot. This is intercalary meristematic zone and this part is capsule. Now we will study in detail the structure of anthocyros as porophyte when we cut longitudinal section of the capsule. Now this part of the sporogonium is called as foot. Now this foot is made up of parenchymatous tissue. This helps in fixation of the uh, sporogonium to the thallus as well as this lower layer become historial in nature. This is attached to the thallus and this will absorb water and nutrients for the sporogonium. Now sporogonium is fixed on the thallus with the help of this foot like structure uh, which is fixing as well as absorbing water and nutrients from the thallus. Next zone is intercalary meristematic zone, this zone. This is also called as seta. Intercalary meristem, meristem means cells which have capacity to divide and re-divide. Because this is intercalated between foot and capsule, so this is called as intercalary meristematic zone. So this will add cells and help in elongation of the capsule or growth of the capsule. Now capsule part is elongated part. Now this, this is the capsule part. If we cut LS, we can see the structure like this. Now this part is having various zones. Like this is the outermost zone. Now this part is called as wall of the capsule. right? And this part, this is the sporogenous tissue. And in the center is present columella. Now first we will discuss about wall of the capsule. Now wall of the capsule is bounded on outer side by epidermal tissue. Now this is the epidermal tissue which is interrupted at places by means of stomatal openings. These are stomatal openings which are helping in gaseous exchange. Now these are the inner layer of the sporogonium wall. Here also this is the outermost layer epidermis and these are the inner wall layers which are about 4 to 6 layers. Again they are made up of parenchyma cells because they have chloroplasts so it is called as chlorenchymatous so green in color. Now this layer because it develops green color or uh, chlorophylls so this will help in photosynthesis this will make the sporogonium or capsule part autotrophic in nature because it can make its own food first it is dependent on thallus for its fixation absorption of water and nutrients but later on this can manufacture its own food and this will become autotrophic in nature on maturity so this is about wall of the capsule now this stoma opening is protected by guard cells like this and this will help in photosynthesis as well as gaseous exchange. Now next we'll discuss about archisporium or sporogenous tissue. Now this is the archisporium or sporogenous tissue. Now we can see here this intercalary meristematic zone is cutting all the cells. So this is the zone which is having fertile tissue. 
Now we can see here there are elater mother cell. These are elater mother cell and these are uh, spore mother cells. Now spore mother cell, they are, uh, spore, as well as elater mother cell, they are deployed in genetic constitution. Now spore mother cell will undergo meiotic cell divisions to form four haploid spores. Now when this structure is produced, this is called a spore tetrad. So we can see here also these are spore tetrads and these are pseudo elaters and these are haploid spores which are being produced after dissociation of the spore tetrad into haploid spores and pseudo elator mother cell will help in formation of pseudo elators now uh, these pseudo elators they may be two three cell thickenings like this they may be made up of two three cells like this they do not have these thickenings like in marchantia but they are hygroscopic in nature hygroscopic is when they can absorb water and when conditions are dry they can lose water so they will help in digestion of the capsule for the liberation of the spores so we can see here alternating this is these are spore mother cell elater mother cell spore mother cell elater mother cell now spore mother cell will develop into four spore each spore mother cell will develop into four haploid spore and pseudo elater mother cell will develop into uh, pseudo elaters so this is the sporogenous tissue now pseudo elaters uh, they help in dehiscence of the capsule for liberation of the spores uh, their function is dehiscence of the capsule for liberation of spores they are hygroscopic in nature uh, but uh, they resemble with marchantia but they are different from marchantia in marchantia there are true elaters but here there are pseudo elaters because their origin uh, may be same structure may be different but function is same because they differ in their structure so they are called as pseudo elaters they resemble with the marchantia elaters but they are different so they are called as pseudo elaters now in the center this part of the capsule is called as columella uh, this is again made up of parent gametous tissue but this is sterile in nature uh, so this helps in supporting the whole of the capsule which is quite delicate in structure so this is made up of vertical elongated cells its function is to act like a pillar and to provide the mechanical support to the capsule as well as this will help in conduction of water and nutrients to various parts of the uh, capsule ultimately now this capsule will dehisce open to liberate the spores and elaters and they will fall on the substratum now how dehiscence take place this will now this part of the uh, this part of the we can say capsule is called as involucre because this is being produced from the gametophytic part of the thallus which is encircling the capsule, lower part of the capsule now how dehiscence take place now this is the we can say jacket or outer covering of the capsule which is also called as epidermis interrupted at places by means of uh, stomatal opening it has one two or three four lines of dehiscence dehiscence lines they are quite weak in nature so when capsule matures up right this, when young it is green in color but when it matures up this turn brown or br black in color now the along the lines of dehiscence when shrinkage of the uh, 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 tissue take place because when capsule is exposed to the external layer this will lose water to the external layer and when this loses water its cells will shrink and this will dehisce upon along the lines of the dehiscence so this will break up and this columella will come out like this and these spores and elaters they will be liberated toward the outer side pseudo elaters they help in dehiscence because when water is available they will swell up they will put a pressure on the capsule when water uh, is lost they will dry up and ultimately uh, this will uh, help in shrinkage of the tissue and this will open up from the weak point and spores and pseudo elaters they will be dispersed toward the outer side and when spores they are dispersed they will fall on the substratum and they will germinate to form the gametophytic tissue now we can see here spores of the anthocyros they are haploid in nature they are bounded on outer side by a thick covering called as exine and internal covering is called as intine now this is cytoplasm and this is the nucleus now when this fall on a suitable substratum this will start germinating and a germ tube will come out of this spore and this germ tube will be having cytoplasm as well as nucleus now then this will start cutting of cells first one cell will be cut then second cell will be cut then four cell will be produced so ultimately this structure will be produced now these four cells later on they may divide and form eight cells now eight cells they may divide to form 
16 cells so we will ultimately get a mass of parenchymatous tissue now first this mass of parenchymatous tissue is dependent upon the nutrients available in the spore but later on this will develop into a rhizoid which will help its fixation to the soil and these parenchyma cell may develop further and they will grow up like this and an apical notch will be created over here and this is the rhizoid which is helping in fixation of this uh, parenchymatous mass to the substratum and these cells they will turn green in color and they will start uh, synthesizing food for the parenchyma cells and this will develop into young sporophyte. So we can say this, a, this apical part of the germ tube this will develop into gametophytic tissue which, we, which will turn green in color and this will make the tissue autotrophic in nature. Rhizoids will fix the young gametophyte to the soil. This will start absorbing water and minerals for the gametophyte and later on mucilage cavities will develop into the anthocerous thallus by degeneration of the cells or schizogenous splitting of the cells now which will inhabited by nostoc filament nostoc filament filament is a member of green blue green algae this will enter through the pores on the ventral surface of the thallus and this will get associated in the mucilaginous cavities and symbiotic association which take place leading to the formation of the nostoc colony so in this way spores they germinate to form the gamete of tissue. Uh, this is all about sporophyte structure as well as the essence of the capsule for liberation of the spores and how spores are germinate to form the gametophytic tissue. Uh, this is uh, if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment box. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video please like